And I will invite you to remain seated for the reading of the gospel. Our gospel story today comes from, again from Matthew 14, this week from verses 22 to 32. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace and peace to you from God, our Creator, and from Jesus Christ, in whom we trust. Amen. His name was Moses, and he confronted the Pharaoh, organized the Jewish people, led them out of slavery, and on a 40-year journey to the Promised Land. But he would be the first to tell you that nothing that he did could have been done apart from God. His name was David. He faced down a giant. He became a king, and he led the Jewish people. But he would be the first to tell you that nothing he did could have been done apart from God. Her name was Deborah. She was a judge of Israel, which means that she was wise and a leader. She was a prophet, and she defended her people against an attack by the Canaanites. But she would be the first to tell you that nothing she did could have been done apart from God. Mary was a young girl, selected by God to become the mother of the Savior. She stood up to the societal judgment that came with being an unwed mother. She stood by her son all the way to his crucifixion, and she sang of the greatness of the Lord. But she would be the first to tell you that nothing she did could have been done apart from God. Danielle is a young adult, whose heart was captured by the plight of children around the world who were kidnapped or sold into slavery and who are victims of sexual exploitation. She went to school to become an advocate and now works around the world to free children from their chains. But she would be the first to tell you that nothing she does could be done apart from God. Susan is a daughter who tends to her mother, who's living in a memory care unit every day. She goes there every morning and helps to feed, bathe, and take care of her. There are good days, and there are days when her mom doesn't even recognize her. But still, she goes faithfully, and she would be the first to tell you that nothing she does could be done apart from God. Richard is a retired contractor, a craftsman, He built beautiful homes for a living. For years, he worked long, tiring days. But now every Saturday and some Sunday afternoons, he goes to the Habitat for Humanity site where he works to provide basic shelter for a family in need. Over the years, he's helped to give over 40 families homes. And he would be the first to tell you that nothing he does could be done apart from God. So here is the question that John Ortberg asks, and now that I ask. What are you doing that you couldn't do without God? Now, I can't answer that question for you, but I can tell you this. There is something, and probably many somethings, that you do every day that you could not do without God. Now, of course, as people of faith, we believe that everything we do, and I mean everything, happens because of God. We eat because of God's goodness. We breathe because of God's goodness. We laugh, love, and live 
because of God's goodness. In a universe created by God, it all comes back to God. So we know that, but it's not exactly what I'm talking about here. There are these things that we do that go beyond the bounds of our normal boat. They are the things that we might not take on without some kind of inspiration. They're out there in the water, which can sometimes be stormy, sometimes not. Now, on any given day, Peter would never have stepped out of the boat and onto the sea. And in the midst of a storm, oh, there was no chance. But on this particular night, Peter looked out and saw his Lord, his rabbi, and his Savior. And Peter knew. So yes, Peter's act was a bold declaration of his faith and his trust. But it is also more than that. It was a confession. A confession of his complete dependence on God. Note how he begins his exchange with Jesus. Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. If it is you, Lord, if it is you. In other words, Lord, this is all about you. By myself, I could not do this. By myself, I wouldn't dare to step out of the boat. But because of you, this is possible. Lord, if it is you. I think Peter's boldest act in that boat might not actually have been stepping out into the water. I think Peter's boldest act might have been confessing his complete dependence on Jesus. Now, to be honest, we really don't like to admit dependence. Humans are a fiercely independent bunch. We like to do it for ourselves. We are a pull-yourself-up-by-your-bootstraps kind of people. In my work, I've seen it 10,000 times. Someone experiences a problem or a crisis, and people gather around them for help or support. But they resist because they don't want to impose or they don't want to appear needy or, or because of their pride. No, to be a water walker is to be someone who can set those things aside. To be someone who could admit their dependence. There is no room for pride on the water. To be a water walker, to be a person of faith, is to be willing to admit our dependence on God. And Peter would have been the first to tell you that there's no way he could have walked on the water apart from Jesus. It was when he confessed his dependence that he walked. Now, there are places in your own life where you feel stuck. It might be family or relationships or work or money or, or your faith. You might feel like so much of your energy is going to just clinging to the boat to keep from being swept overboard. Well, that, that walking on the water isn't even in the realm of possibility. It could be that you're holding on too tight. It could be that you're working too hard to control your situation. It might be that the best thing that you can do is to throw your arms open wide and to admit that you can't do it without God, that you are dependent, and then to step out into the new. The Jesus you confess as Lord will be there. He will tell you to come. And when you falter, he will pick you up. Why? because you are dependent on him, and he is trustworthy. Admit your dependence. Trust and walk. Jesus is with you. And when you find yourself out on the water, taking risk, trying something new, changing someone's life, changing the world, remember your dependence. And remember that nothing you're doing could possibly be done apart from the God who loves you. Amen.